When there is an electric field produced between the two plates of the capacitor, there are now free electrons in the non-zero condu conductive material available to move, and they could start to migrate between the two plates. This would mean that we have a conduction current between the plates. So here, there's no wire through S2, but we do have a conductive material, so this is no longer zero. We're going to have some sort of conduction current here. So there would si simultaneously be some displacement current and some conduction current. However, the total current would remain the same. The conduction current and the displacement current between the two plates would still equal the current flowing in the wire. If we could figure out how much conduction current there is relative to the amount of displacement current between the two plates, we could learn about the material between the two plates. That is, whether it behaves more like a good conductor or a low-loss dielectric or something in between. We haven't talked about the term low-loss dielectric yet, but we will be. So a good conductor or a non-good conductor. <laughs> Let's see if we can find a way to compare the two currents, the displacement current and the conduction current. The displacement current can be written in terms of the electric field. We can write it as epsilon and dE dt. If we can also write the conduction current in terms of an electric field, then we could directly compare these two terms because they would both have an electric field in them. What can we turn to in order to develop an equation that relates the conduction current density, J, to an electric field in a material? Well, we already saw that we can relate J to I, the amount of current flowing. So then, if we had a way to relate I to E, and this is conduction current, then we could also, so if we can relate I to E, then we could also write the conduction current in terms of the electric field. And maybe you might remember from a previous physics course that we can also relate the electric field to the potential difference across the material. So for example, here's a slab of material. We have some electric field applied, and there's a, now it induces a potential difference across the material. And we can write V is equal to, if we integrate, E dot DL here. So L is the length of the material. So if we integrate E along the length of this material, uh, we would get the potential difference across that material. So here, I'll put an arrow here that we can relate E to V. But if we can relate I to E and then E to V, now we can go from I to V. So putting all this together, what we're interested in is relating I to V, the voltage to the current. And we need an equation um, that might make us think of circuit elements, for example, that can give us a relationship between voltage and current. So is there a circuit element that we can use to represent the electrons flowing in a conductive material, where as the electrons migrate, they'll be colliding with other atoms and other electrons, and that could cause some resistance, and it could generate heat. Boy, this sure makes me think of a resistor. If this is true, we should be able to use Ohm's law, which is V equals IR. Ohm's law describes the power loss due to heating caused by the flow of current. This power loss is dictated by the magnitude of the resistance R of the material. So let's see if we can obtain such an expression. Consider the rectangular slab of material between the plates of the capacitor. So here we can consider this slab of material between, as being the material between the plates of the capacitor. There's an applied electric field across the material. That's as the current starts to flow from the wire. So here we could have a wire above and here below. Um, start by writing down Ohm's law, which we already just did. 
and spend a minute and see if you can rewrite Ohm's law so that you get a relationship between the conduction current density J and the electric field. So we are here and we want to see if we can get a, this go back we're kind of work backwards and get a relationship between J conduction current density J so I could put a C here and the electric field. For convenience you can either pause right now and just do it or I can give you three remind you of three things that might be helpful. The total resistance so first of all I'll say the total resistance of the material between the two plates is the inverse of the conductivity so R is 1 over sigma scaled by the factor relating to the materials dimensions so this will be L over A so A because of the flow of the current A is the cross-sectional area L is the length of the material. Uh, the second thing is right here which we've already written about the voltage to the electric field and the last thing is what we wrote up earlier we can relate I to J using this. So now see if you can work from start with V equals I R and see if you can get to a relationship where you relate J C the conduction current to the electric field.